Hello, Duelist this is Tom Box here. Welcome to MSC.TV. In this video, we're going to be talking about a cringy deck, Gem Knight FTK. Who loves this deck? Well, if you love this deck, you, sir, are an no, well, actually, to be honest, if you were playing this deck, it is actually very unpleasant playing against you. In fact, it's not just your deck, it's all FTKs. And we all hate losing the FTKs. Think about it. You're about to win your match, or you're in the bubble match, and oh my god, YCS, gonna win the next one, hit the next day, top 32, whatever it is. And you sit down, your butt's not even warm, the seat's still kind of cold, and you lose. It's like your chance was taken away from you just because you have an asshole of a, a dueling opponent. Well, it happens because they like to win. And now you get to watch them go to day two. So, we all hate Gemini FTK, so this video we're going to be talking about how to stop it or how to minimize their chances of like, succeeding in the FTK against you and what you can actually do about it. So, in this video, I haven't really played the deck uh, ever. In fact, here's my tryout of doing the FTK based off of a random deck list I found online. And I didn't even watch the combine, I tried it out myself, and this is what it looks like. So. So I know I completely botched the whole thing, but eh, it was good enough. I still got there even though I completely messed the whole thing up. I thought I messed it up. I thought there was a much cleaner way of doing the combo, but apparently I just didn't know how to do it and I required a couple of sack cards to get me there. But there are a couple of sack cards in the deck that gets you there. One is Brilliant Fusion and the other is Soul Charge. If you have Soul Charge, you're guaranteed to fill the board anyway and then you're gonna well, your opponent's gonna die from burning. But there's a couple of crucial points in that entire combo, and let's talk about that right now. First of all, Phantom Quartz. The search for Gemini Fusion is quite crucial, especially if they don't have a copy of Gemini Fusion, they are not going to be able to kill you because that is one of the key cards. If they already have it, then they are losing one earlier combo piece. That means they will require perhaps a Brilliant Fusion or perhaps a Soul Charge to actually get there. And don't forget, they have a ton of specials on the whole deck with a Crystal Rose and everything is all about throwing stuff into the graveyard because Phantom Quartz himself is also considered as another fusion summon effect available to them. So, in this video, I'm going to sort it into, I guess, three parts? Yeah, let's say three parts. Part one is, what do you do during the game one? What do you do during the game two going first? Well, two and three, going first and then going second. So, game one, going first and then going second. So, when you go first, this is what you can do. You can pray to RNGesus that, hey, um, let me win this die roll so I can actually set up a counter or set up my board so they can't do anything. That's, that's, that's all you can do right now. Aside from that, if you have hand traps built into your deck, uh, note a few key monsters that you actually have to stop. If you want to stop a monster, Phantom Quartz might be one of them, but Diamond is definitely one that you perhaps want to actually knock out because if you have a Ghost Ogre, Phantom Quartz isn't exactly enough because they already got the Gemini Fusion. And don't forget, Gemini Fusion is not limited to once per turn. If they can cycle it, they won't need that Phantom Quartz anymore. So game one, not much you can do. Hope for the best. Uh, for game twos and three, uh, let's talk about for game two and three hard counters. Uh, one hard counter right now would be Ghost Reaper, Winter Cherries. If you have the Reaper, if you have the pretty Sakura little Scythe Lady, you can just take out Diamond. The reason for taking out Diamond is that Lapis Lazuli is once per turn. You can only summon her once per turn, and therefore they need Diamond to actually do the other two consecutive burns against you. Take, reaping away all the Diamonds, 
make sure that they're not going to able to summon out diamond so they have to summon another lapis lazuli the next turn and lapis lazuli requires specifically a gem knight lapis to actually summon out so it just minimizes the chances of that happening so that's one form of a hard counter that i would say is a little bit more practical if perhaps you do have this in your side deck because don't forget you need stuff in your side that's practical for multiple matchups rather than oh i hate this deck i'm just gonna side 15 cards against it and then they'll lose that was the zodiac format sadly we're not in the zodiac format anymore so i guess we'll have to we'll have to live with a diverse format because that's actually one of the uh one of the things that happen in a diverse format that you don't have enough side deck space for every single thing so you have to you know side a little bit for everything so the other thing that is a bit of a hard counter less practical unless there's a crap ton of burn decks out there hanewada everyone talks about it oh just side hanewada you'll be fine but you're only using it for this specifically one matchup. It is very good. You can skip your opponent's turn. They go Lapis Lazuli. You ditch the Hanewada. Call it a day. Good. Because even if they do summon a VFD, VFD can't get rid of this. Even if they play Drag Down to the Grave to rip out your hand traps. Uh, guess what? You can still ditch it beforehand so that they take away another card. And you don't burn to death. But it is a hard, hard turn skip for them because they can't kill you. And a third card would be Curse Seal of the Forbidden Spell. Take away the Gemini Fusion and then you have nothing to worry about. There's no follow-up fusion. The only fusion they have left is the Phantom Quartz. And perhaps if they run multiple copies of Gemini Fusion, that's, that's not going to work. But how good is this card in terms of practicality? Perhaps you're one of those guys that always tech this card because you think that every single deck has some sort of card that is you know 100 run and there's always a target for this card perhaps you're right perhaps you're wrong i don't know perhaps it depends on the format but hey that is a decent choice because you will survive and recently of course thing that came out we have the called by the grave this particular uh, i guess quick play spell is quite useful for you to actually remove away the uh, lapis lazuli out of the graveyard so when they summon out master diamond if you remove the lapis lazuli then they're not going to be able to use the effect for one thing is that you banished it but also they anything named lapis lazuli for that turn cannot activate so in other words you're safe you're safe from getting burned to death but don't forget if this is turn two uh just bear in mind that you can still get attacked no just don't die to that too so, okay, so those would be some of the hard counters. But what about some stuff that you can use going first that perhaps you do have in your side deck? So let's go over that first. So going first, you have a chance to actually set up your board. Perhaps you're not getting the most ideal set. Perhaps you're, the board that you set up, the type of board you set up, isn't one full of negation. What do you do in that case? Well, if you're playing a bit of a control deck, you can definitely try out Torrential Tribute. Why? Because it blows up all monsters on the field, and without monsters on the field, you can't take heavy burn damage, and you can interrupt your opponent's combos. Oh, they got through the Phantom Quartz. That's crazy. Uh, but sure, I'll just blow up your entire board. Now what are you going to do? I'm just going to blow up your entire board and then see what you do. Without Phantom Quartz, you can't just put the cards from your graveyard or banish back into the deck. You'll have to make another Phantom Quartz to actually get there. So in other words, it's actually slowing you down, and using Phantom Quartz burns you off two materials, so... Are you going to banish most of your stuff? I don't think you have enough resource after eating, like, I don't know, a minus five on a Torrential. So Torrential Tribute is not bad. I would say D Barrier is probably one of the best ones. Just call Fusions. They can't fuse. Can't kill you. And if they can't fuse, they can't go into Diamond. They can't go into VFD. Also pretty good. Now, if you have any form of monster negation, definitely play those because you can stop the Phantom Quartz. Especially if you actually just negate the Phantom Quartz with an Effect Failure. That works really well. On two levels, you take away Phantom Quartz's ability to actually add the Gemini Fusion, and you take away the, the ability to actually fuse. So definitely Effect Veiler is very good. If you're a deck that can run Hope Harbinger, eat up the Gemini Fusion so that they can't actually activate it no more, that actually works out pretty well. Call by the Grave, again, is also a pretty good choice, and any form of monster removal will definitely help you out. And that would be some of the options for going first. If you guys have better suggestions, leave it down in the comment section below. There are some options that are available for going second that are also pretty good for going first. In fact, you should probably still run it. I'm going to start it off with Ash Blossom Joyous Spring. All in all, she just prevents you from actually taking the burn damage altogether. Why? Because to activate the effect of Lapis Lazuli, 
you have to be able to mill a card from the main deck or the extra deck. And since they have to activate it and doesn't really target or anything, uh, and it doesn't matter because it includes sending a monster from the deck to the graveyard, you can ash that and you prevent the entire burn altogether because it has an and if you do conjunction, and since the first part didn't happen, the second part will not happen either. So there you go. Just ash it, and then you won't die. And even if you just ash the Lapis Lazuli, I think it's actually okay. Because the maximum amount of burn that they can actually dish out at you is about 9k in one turn. I think that's about right. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. So you have the Lapis Lazuli for the first 3k, and then you have a Master Diamond for the second 3k. And then you'll have another Master Diamond for the last one. So what you can do is if you definitely want to secure yourself from dying, you just just ash one of the burn effects because the burn effect will only actually happen if they are able to send a card to the graveyard and ash can prevent the main deck. And luckily it includes the text of send a card from the main deck or the extra deck main deck is there so you can actually stop it with an ash so ash being one of the most powerful things you should actually decide this whether you're going first or second because the fact that simply just by just holding the ash blossom joy spring you're not gonna die and there's other targets you can actually hit too like brilliant fusion but if you actually want to survive don't hit the brilliant fusion hit the only thing that actually matters the burn damage because they can actually keep on pushing even without that brilliant fusion especially if they have a soul charge or something like that in there Next up, Ghost Ogre. If you actually have Ghost Ogre in there, I would suggest you to actually hit off, say, the Master Diamond. When Master Diamond uses his effect to banish the Lapis Lazuli, smack it with a Ghost Ogre and get rid of it off of the field. Therefore, you don't take the burn damage that would be upcoming from that Master Diamond, and therefore he would be required to use another three monsters to fuse into that Master Diamond, which could really save you, especially if they use the Phantom Ports effect to actually make him. That would have been free, so if you got rid of it, the next time they fuse, it has to be from the Gemini Fusion. And from Gemini Fusion, it burns off three cards. Unless he's been constantly adding monsters back to his hand, which is the right thing to do if you're playing that deck. Uh, you can actually minimize the burn, perhaps survive with at least a little bit of life left too. And if you take away one of the Master Diamonds, if they only run two Master Diamonds, since they can't bring up the third Master Diamond, it's, it's good. You're only taking two burns, so you'll survive. As for Joel and Logbird, probably the worst trap here for them because they are able to actually play around the Joel and Logbird entirely simply by just milling the cards that they need back in there and I guess just fetching from graveyard. They're not going to be drawing as much uh, or adding card as much, I would say. But if you're able to actually draw and lock them before they actually got to Phantom Quartz's add a Gem Knight Fusion, that is a very practical point. Uh, if you actually did it before, because without the Gemini Fusion, they're not going to be able to go off. If they were to have Gemini Fusion, well, that's just too bad for you. Uh, you're going to die. Effect Veiler. Uh, I don't think I need to elaborate too much on this card, but Effect Veiler is very useful. You can use it to hit off a Diamond, hit off the Lapis Lazuli, just hit it off against any of the burning, and you should probably survive. Aside from that, you should be okay now. As long as you know which card to actually prevent you from dying, you should be good. But beware, BFD is also a thing. If they know that they can't bring you to death, they have a good chance that they're just going into true king of all calamities and just stunning you out of turn and just beating you down. And that actually really hurts. If you're playing Pendulum Magicians, well, VFD called Dark, you can't trigger your purple poison and therefore you can't clear the board. You can't use your Dark Room effect in the graveyard. You can't use anything. It becomes very, very struggling, and then VFD is still on the board, and he can call Dark again, and you'll still be screwed over. So you're going to lose quite a bit uh, if they call Dark. And aside from that, I think that's all I got for suggestions on what would happen for hand traps. If you guys have any other suggestions, leave it down in the comment section below. I'd love to read what you guys have to suggest, and perhaps... In terms of most practical choices, one, Dimensional Barrier if you're going first. Torrential Tribute's a pretty good choice. Effect Failure for going first and second. You have also Ash Blossom for going first and second. Even Ogre is actually not too bad for taking out the Master Diamond. As long as you can let it get through, it will be great. Especially when Master Diamond needs to change his name first before doing the burn. So that part makes Ogre actually a bit more successful. But that's all I got for now for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, hit me up with a thumbs up if you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV. And here's the thing. Uh, Google recently, uh, not Google, well, I guess Google. YouTube has released what's up with the whole notification thing. If you don't click the notification bell, uh, 
there's a chance that you won't actually see the latest video or just won't show up. Even if you have it on the notification bell, it might not even show up. They kind of sorted everything to tears. So if you want to you know, stay tuned to MSD.TV, hit that like button and subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with my, like, my latest shenanigans. My next video is actually going to be one thing that I'm going to give to you guys for free. Aside from the giveaway that I will be doing an announcement for very soon, uh, there is proxies. I'll be giving you free proxies in the next video. How are you going to get that? Well, you have to stay tuned for the next video. And the set of proxies that are going to happen, well, I don't know. I'll keep it a secret for now. But until then, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.